I think it's important to share stories. Welcome to another episode where we get to meet amazing people making amazing changes on this planet. Without further ado, I'd like to present to you Elena Muratova. She's an Olympian best-selling author of a book called My Russian Way to Baldness, How to Find Yourself. She's also a life transition coach and a writing coach. Welcome, Elena. How are you doing today? <laughs> Hello, Jennifer. Thank you for having me here today. I'm doing fine and I'm excited to be here. Excellent. Excellent. I'm so excited to share with everyone what your story is. You have an exciting adventure to share with us today. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit more about your story and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, sure. Thank you for asking. I'm originally from Russia, so you might can hear my accent. But I now live in Canada. So I moved in Canada in 2014. I started to ski when I was three years old. When I was in Russia in my small native town. And then I just fell in love with skiing. And I progressed and eventually participated in Olympic Games in 2014 in Sochi. And it was amazing. It was um, hard journey for myself. Uh, I also had two knee surgeries on my way to Olympic Games. And so it was all about ups and downs. But eventually I accomplished my dream, just participated in Olympic Games. And after that, it was time for me to retire. And I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, even where I wanted to live. <laughs> but during one of my training camps, when I was still training, I met my husband. And when I retired, I just moved to Canada because he was in Canada in that moment. And it was the end of the story, kind of. Or oh, the, the beginning of new chapter for myself, because, of course, I had to to decide what to do next. And it was very hard. Um, I didn't mention, but in my childhood, my dad was my coach for many years. And basically my parents, they are both coaches, my dad in alpine skiing and my mom in figure, sk figure skating. So I have this joke that in the past, in my childhood, I had only two choices, alpine skiing or figure skating. <laughs> so my mom said, no, like, I don't want to be a coach for my kids. And my dad was like, yeah, I will. <laughs> so yeah, that is why I uh, was involved in skiing for so long. Oh, I maybe just started to ski, but then I just enjoy it very much. Uh, and it was a huge part of my life or even it was my whole life, to be honest with you, because I spent I don't know, maybe like 300 day per year training and competing in different areas <laughs> and just coming back home for a little while, for a little while. Of course, when I was already um, adult or more like in my 20s years, um, when I was a child, I spent more time at, at home, of course. Yeah, and then it was so hard for me to leave sport when I retired because it was all my life, as I said, and I just, I lost myself almost. I, I didn't know who I was without sports and I didn't know what I wanted to do <laughs> with my life. It was very challenging time when I had to go through many of these transitions. Um, because uh, at the same year, I not only retired from sport, as I mentioned, but I also moved to Canada, I got married, I started a new career, and it was all, all very hard, but I'm grateful that I had people close to me that were supportive, and I'd be able to go through those hard 
times and just find my new passion in life and start helping people. Thank you. Wow, that's that's an amazing story. And, and it also brings up the question is, it, it led you to helping people is what you just said. And so my next question would be, how, what is your zone of genius now? Uh, how do you help people? I'd love to hear more. I'm sure our audience would. Yeah, thank you for asking. I started to help people as a personal trainer at Ferros because it's something that I knew how to do, how to train people, how to coach people to be uh, more fit and strong and healthy. Of course, I didn't know a lot about running a business, so it was another part that I had to learn. But then with time, I, I started to have a huge interest in psychology and I started to learn um, different pieces here and there, taking different online courses regarding to mindset and habits and different topics related to psychology. And with time, I realized that I want to help people in broader way, not only help them to maintain their physical health, but also in general, help them to improve and maintain, maintain their well-being. And yeah, that is why with time, I just decided to become a life transition coach and started to help people in adjusting to new chapters in their life because it's something that I went through and I know how challenging it can be. And people usually face so many uncertainty and worries and they usually overwhelm with, with all the changes. So they really need to boost their well-being and have some support, have some guidance to successfully go through that transitions. Yeah, it's what I just um, gradually started to do. In the beginning, I just helped people to change their habits. It was more related to personal training part. I started to work with mindset in that area. And then, yeah, I just shifted more to life transition. And um, now I work with people one-on-one. -on -one, and I also offer my six-week online course, which people can just join and uh, get some support, some guidance, and some clarity about their values, priority, meaning in life, uh, improve their confidence and trust. So it's yeah, very, very interesting for me topic to teach people or coach people, help them to understand more about themselves and improve their lives. That's really exciting. Uh, tell us more about your six week program. I understand it's, it's, it's fairly, uh, You've, you've added a lot of new information to it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's basically, I, um, I try to put to, together the program that encompasses all my experiences and knowledge and all the tools that I used uh, successfully to go through different life transitions. But also, I put there some knowledge I got from studying, studying psychology at college here in British Columbia. And yeah, it, um, it's amazing program at six weeks. So basically six steps. And we start with uh, clarifying values and priorities. We work a lot on that. It's a very first step. And then we work on structure and how to reduce anxiety and deal successfully with uncertainty and limitations. Then we work with identity, how to extend identity, how to find strengths in yourself, um, how to improve confidence and trust in the world and trust self-trust uh, as well. And we focus a lot on mindfulness, of course, because to understand all of this about uh, yourself, you need to be mindful and uh, be in contact with your body and uh, with what you are doing with the world too. So yeah, it's, um, I really like this course because it's not 
for people it's very interactive it's not just watching and listening it's also participating in different activities taking action steps and participating into the discussion so before every session i send people question to ponder and it's usually very um, existential deep questions that we not very often ask ourselves in our daily life you know, people can prepare to the session before then they participate and then they also get some weekly action steps to accomplish during the week. And of course, we also have um, support group where people can ask any questions or get additional support if they need it. Wonderful. It sounds very extensive and, and well mm -hmm. laid out. It's very exciting. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to know more about your book. Can you uh, tell us a little bit more about the story behind the title. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, here is my book. Um, I published it in the end of last year. And it was a very emotional process for me. I cried a lot <laughs> while I was writing the book because I wrote about it's a memoir. So I wrote about myself, about my past, and I had to go back to different um, challenging experiences I faced. But writing my book also helped me to get this closure, get some, I think, to own my story. And it was very helpful. I started to look at my past differently in, in a positive way. Um, and when I, I, I didn't know how to title my book, how to name my book, I was thinking about my cover for a while, but I then decided to go with, this is my, my hat, <laughs> old picture with hair and new picture without any hair because I have alopecia. It's a disease that um, forces my hair to fall out. So it doesn't affect any other organs but it only affects my appearance. And yeah, I just decided to play with the words and go with like boldness. And then it's like A, it's crossed and it's O because it was my journey was about like going through challenges with alopecia since I was a teenager and struggle with other aspects in my life. And through this journey, still obtaining some courage and becoming bold in the way that <laughs> become con more confident um, with myself. Yeah. And that is why I just decided to name my books this way. And then I have a subtitle, subtitle is How to Find Yourself. I put it here because my book has second part. Second part has uh, different helpful tools. So it's more like action steps that people, people can take. They can just do these different exercises. Um, one big part of these exercises is basically about how to become more resilient. And again, I just share different tools that helped me to become more resilient. And uh, another part is how to find yourself. It's about identity, how to just broaden your identity and uh, get strengths from that. Amazing. Very, very powerful information, <laughs> I'm sure, to be able to follow your journey and be inspired by your journey to be able to help support ourselves. So thank you for sharing that. You're doing some amazing things to help heal heal our communities globally. It's very exciting. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. I think it's important to share stories. Um, it, it's difficult to be vulnerable, but when, when I hear other people's stories, I often can relate. And I think, oh, wow, it's what happened to me, but I thought it only was unique to me. So I never, bring it up but when somebody shares the same it gives other people courage to um, i don't know courage to 
to share their stories too, but also courage to to become more themselves, maybe not not to be afraid of talking about that, or maybe even seek help if it's something that they can deal by themselves. Yeah, so that is why it's for me it's um, that is why I wanted to share my story, and now I help other authors to share their stories as well. Thank you, and it's it's a, another great reason. So we all have our stories to share, but as you said, a lot of us keep our stories hidden, and it's it's people who are mentors like you that help bring those stories out, give us confidence to be able to share our stories. <laughs>